Well, greetings, everyone. Once again, this is Israel Hawkins coming to you from the house of Yahweh in Abilene, Texas. And this is the Prophetic Word Program. Now, brethren, the, the, the prophecies that Yahweh gave, that Yahweh only lays the claim to being able to give. Yahweh, of course, is the creator uh, of the universe. His name was in all the original Holy Scriptures from which your Bible was translated, but of course they left out his name and they replaced his name with words such as Lord and God. In the original versions, in the original inspired manuscripts, the name Yahweh only was placed there. If you got in a linear of the Bible, of the uh, uh, Holy Scriptures, it would show you where the name Yahweh was used, and also this shows you where they started adding in the second copy of the of these manuscripts. They started adding the words God, and and um, and uh, or El and Elohim and so forth. But in the original, the word Yahweh, the name of the Father, the Heavenly Father Yahweh, was exclusively used in those scriptures. The catechisms of the Catholic Church have now been released, and they show, even in Book 2, uh, how the word uh, kurios uh, uh, was uh, 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 put instead of the Creator's name. And, of course, from that, it goes to English then. That's Greek, and they go from that to the English word uh, Lord. Well, of course, as I brought out in the last broadcast, the word Lord is not a divine title. And, and as Unger's Bible Dictionary says, it's the word Lord is not properly a divine title and should have never been used to replace the Creator's name. Well, the catechisms of the Catholic Church that had just been released shows this and shows how the name was replaced and, and, uh, uh, and why it was replaced. They say that... Uh, that uh, they replaced it out of, uh, you know, uh, respect for the Creator. Uh, you know, this doesn't make sense. But the, the prophets of Yahweh, the inspired prophets of Yahweh, condemned this action. And it was done back, now, uh, this prophet Uremia, for instance, or Jeremiah, they changed his name too uh, in the Holy Scriptures. His name was Uremia. And of course, uh, the, the, the word, the name Yeremia, it means may Yahweh lift up. Well, they changed that to Jeremiah. What does that mean? It <laughs> takes the name out of it. So what meaning do you have? This was written in 598 uh, BC. Uh, 598 BCE, and the, and the chapter is 23, and verse 26 and the prophet Jeremiah, or Uremia, says, How long will this be in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies? Prophesy lies. Well, what's he talking about? He says, They're prophets of deceit of their own minds, who cause my people to forget my name. Forget the Creator's name. Well, this is what they were doing. How did they do it? Through their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, just as their fathers have forgotten my name for Lord or Baal. Baal is condemned throughout the Holy Scriptures, and that's what the word Lord means. It means Baal. Baal, Lord, they're the same. Baal, Hebrew, Lord, English. And that's what they replace the Creator's name with. Well, of course, the name of the Savior was replaced too. Constantine, who was an emperor, this is history, he chose from four gods, the names of four gods. And he picked the, two of the gods' names, put them together, and made his own name for a god that he said, will be universal, where everyone will accept it. <laughs> and that's where he got the name Jesus Christ. The, what, the Savior's name was actually Yahshua, and it actually means Yahweh will save his people from their sins. That's the meaning of the name. 
Yahweh will save his people from their sins. The name of the Savior. Well, they took that out and they used the name. They put English, English, Jesus Christ. The, the, the name Jesus, you know, the, it starts with the letter J. There is no J in the Hebrew language. There is no J in the Greek language. Never has been. They didn't, they didn't even have a J in English language until 1600. 1600 is when they added the letter J to the English alphabet. What was his name before that? It wasn't Jesus. <laughs> well, it was Joshua. They translated, they translated this Joshua in the King James Version. Well, all of these things have come down to us now. And of course, we have the history of it. We know what has been done. And of course, the house of Yahweh has, has, uh, uh, is trying to correct all these mistakes. The book of Yahweh has the name Yahweh where it belongs and has the true name of the Savior where it belongs. It's the closest thing to the Hebrew language that you can find according to expert scholars of the Holy Scriptures. In Revelations, we got up to this in the last broadcast. Now, the Savior said concerning this time period right here that we're in, in, in uh, Revelation 6, you could turn there. But the Savior, in showing his apostles what would be in the end time, he was actually, he, can't, he left the temple, and the Hebrew words there actually shows he left the temple permanently. He was rejected. He came to his own, and, 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 and they rejected him. So he left the temple, never to go back in that temple again, in, in, in Matitia, the 24th chapter. He and his, his, his apostles left. He took the laws and the prophecies with him because he was the only one that had understanding of the laws and the prophecies. He said in Luke 24, verse 25, he said, you're a fool, you're fools if you don't believe all that the prophets have spoken. All that the prophets have spoken. Well, of course, the, the Hebrews, the 12 tribes, they rejected Yahweh. You find this in the book of Isaiah, the book of Jeremiah or Jeremia, the book of Yekishka or Ezekiel, as is in the King James Version. You find this throughout the Holy Scriptures, that the 12 tribes left Israel. Isaiah 43, the last verse, the last two verses, Yahweh said, your first fathers have sinned and your interpreters have, have, have uh, uh, changed or broken my covenant. Daniel says they no longer pray in the name of, of Yahweh. They don't use the name of Yahweh. That's chapter nine of Daniel. They've broken the laws they no longer pray with the name to Yahweh. Isaiah said the same thing. Jeremiah said they changed it for Lord. Well, that word Lord, that word Lord, Daniel uses the word abomination of desolation. The Savior does too here. And he says, therefore, when you see the abomination, King James Version, the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place. He says, whosoever reads, let him understand. The abomination of desolation, that was the way it was translated. Interpreter's Bible Dictionary says, this actual meaning of this Hebrew word is the Lord of the heavenly habitation, spoken of as Satan the devil. When you see Satan the devil Take his stand. Take her stand there. That's what the Savior was saying. The word abomination of desolation is none other than the Lord of the heavenly habitation. This is not Yahweh. Remember, the word Lord is not a divine title. Unger's Bible Dictionary plainly states this, and, and it's probably shown on the screen there, a copy of it right now, under the word Lord. 
His name was Yahweh, but they took his name out and put the word Lord. And this is who the world serves today. All the world serves El Elohim, which means God and gods, Adonai, which means Lord, or Baal, which means Lord, both of them. This is what the world is serving today. They're cut off from the from Yahweh. They're cut off from Yahweh. They don't use his name, and they break his laws, which Isaiah 59, Isaiah 59, 1 and 2 plainly shows. You cut yourself off from Yahweh, this is the reason they do not understand prophecy and cannot bring the prophecies forth for the people to understand today. Isaiah 59 says, verse 1 says, Behold, Yahweh's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Now, the King James Version took the name Yahweh out there. Behold, Yahweh's hand is not shortened, they put the word Lord in, or the word God. So it would say God's hand is not shortened. But it actually means Yahweh, because the world is serving Lord. They're worshiping Lord. They use it in all their prayers today, throughout the whole world, except for the house of Yahweh. Chapter 59, verse 2 said, But your own iniquities have separated you from the Father, and your own sins. Sin is the breaking of Yahweh's laws. 1 John 3, 4 plainly says this. 1 John 3, 4 says, Sin is the, is the transgression of the law. When you sin, you transgress the law because sin is the transgression of the law. 1 John 2, 4 said, He that says, I know him, and keeps not his laws is a liar and the truth is not in him. Where does that put all the people today, all the religions today? When they break Yahweh's laws, plainly break his laws, ignore his laws, as the world has done, they're cut off from Yahweh. But your own iniquities have separated you from your father, and your own sins have caused him to hide his face from you. He will not hear your prayers. That's what it says. Well, we go back here to the Savior now. And the Savior is saying, you're fools if you don't believe all that the prophets have spoken. And then he also said in chapter 15 of, of, the, of Yachanan, or as they translated it, John, his name was actually Yachanan, having the name of the Creator in it, and of course, 15 and verse 22 says, If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have had their sins revealed. But now they have no cloak for their sins. This is what the Savior was doing. He was saying, you're not keeping the laws of Yahweh. You have the laws, but you're not keeping the laws of Yahweh. They said, keep the oral law. Forget about the written law of the prophets. Just keep the oral law of the rabbis. The oral law of the rabbis, they can't, the rabbis can't even agree on what the law is. And if you read the Talmud, you'll find one rabbi is saying one thing, another rabbi is saying the other thing. That's the reason Luke 24, 25 says, you're fools for following this. You're fools if you don't believe all that the inspired prophets spoke that is written, written for you to follow. He says, the Savior came saying, you're not keeping the laws of Yahweh and this is what you need to be doing. He says, you must live by every word, every word that proceeds from the mouth of Yahweh. Verse 22 says, if I had not spoken to them, they would not have their sins revealed, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He said, he who hates me hates Yahweh also. He who hates me hates also Yahweh. But this is fulfilled what is written in the scriptures, they hated me without a cause. And of course now he says, they seek to kill me. They seek to kill me. That's what they're, 
they're seeking to do to the to me also in fact uh, for bringing forth the truth to them they seek to kill me this is going on right now just like they hated the savior they hate me for telling these truths but these are the truths you want to hide in lies is that what you want to do Accept the truth, and the truth will make you free. If you read your own Bible, you will see the laws in the Bible. Even the Ten Commandments. They changed the Fourth Commandment, as the prophet Daniel said they would do. The Fourth Commandment says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. It's the seventh day of the week. The, first, the Yahweh rested on the seventh day of each week. He blessed the seventh day and made it holy. That's what Yahweh did, the Creator, the Yahweh, as James, or Jacob said, uh, he, he said, Yahweh, there's only one lawgiver. In, in James 4 and verse 12, it says, there is one lawgiver, that is Yahweh, one judge who is able to save and to destroy. One person, one being. The Savior said, fear not man who can destroy the body, but fear Yahweh who can destroy both body and soul in hell fire. Well, of course, here in Revelations 20, we see a great white throne judgment. We see a great white throne judgment. And this is uh, chapter 20 and verse uh, starts with verse 11. And I saw a great white throne and him who sat upon it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled, he says, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before Yahweh. Now, they took that word out, and the Greeks put kurios in its place, which means Lord. But Yahweh is the, is the final judge. He is the head judge. He is the chief judge. He's the creator. He's the heavenly father who created mankind for a purpose. That purpose being was to make him in, in Yahweh's image and likeness and to give him authority over all the works of his hands, over all the works of Yahweh's hand. Those who will qualify will receive that authority. Yahshua said, be faithful unto death in the laws of Yahweh and I will give you a crown of life. He's the only one. Yahweh is the only one that can give life. Yes, the only one who can give eternal life. The gods can't give life. They can't resurrect the dead. If they could, they'd already have done so. They can't foretell the future. Yahweh is not a god. He is never identified as a god in the original scriptures. Well, you're going to stand before Yahweh. I saw this great white throne, and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before Yahweh. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. According to their works. No, Yahshua, the Savior, did not do it all for you. Jesus Christ didn't even keep the laws, you know. Zeus didn't keep the laws. That's where you get the name Jesus. And Christos didn't keep the laws. That means anointed. Yeshua, the true Savior, kept the laws. But he didn't keep the laws so you wouldn't have to keep the laws. In fact, he says here in the last chapter, Blessed are those who keep the laws of Yahweh, for they have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. We'll read that in just a moment. But here he said, you're judged according to your works, not according to the Savior's works, but according to your works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in them, and death and Sheol, the grave, delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were all judged, every person, according to their works. Death and Sheol was cast into the lake of fire, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Who's written in the book of life? Chapter 22, the very last book, very last chapter in your Bible. And verse 12 says, 
Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his works. I am the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who keep his, that is the Father's laws, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. They may have right to the tree of life. That is eternal life. He said, for outside is everyone else, God worshipers, murderers, and so forth. I, Yeshua, verse 16, have, and, and, and of course they translated that. They took his name out there and put Lord. But the name there that was, that was in the original, that the catechisms of the Catholic Church say was replaced, is the word Yahshua, which means Yahweh will save his people from their sins. I, Yahshua, have sent my Moloch to testify to you these things. In the congregations of the house of Yahweh, I am the root and offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come. Let him who hears say, Come. And let him who is thirsty come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. Okay, now this is the scenario we have today. A world full of deception, worshiping whom they know not what. And here in Revelations 12 and verse 9, he says, Satan is cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. I told you, all the world is worshiping lords, gods, so forth. None of them are turning their attention to Yahweh. And this is where they should. You know why? Yael, the, the prophet, Joel, in the King James Version, his name was Yael in the, in the original scriptures. His name is Yael, meaning Yahweh is our strength. He was inspired to write in chapter 2, verse 31, the sun will be turned into darkness, and the moon and the blood before the great and terrible day of Yahweh comes. And whosoever will call with the name of Yahweh, yes, whosoever will call with the name of Yahweh will be delivered. But if you don't call with the name of Yahweh, meaning you will not be delivered. Isn't it time we kind of get our head out of the sand like an ostrich and start looking and seeing what they have done to deceive the whole world, as the scripture says? Right now, we're facing what is shown in, in Matthew 24, which he says there'll be famine. This is uh, Matthew 24, or Matthew, if you have a King James Version, 24 and verse 7 says this, the Savior, this is the Savior doing the speaking, telling his disciples when the end of man's governments will be. And he says in verse 7, at that time the end is going to be nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Yes, and that's what we see all over the world now. The hatred we see taking place, like Russia uh, sinking a, 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 ch a ship that belonged to China, uh, you know, the mentality of this. China had a ship, of course, loaded with wheat they bought from Russia. It was leaving the docks, and some little dispute took place in the papers, and, and, and Russia, with its great power, sinks the ship, sends out a boat to sink the ship. You know, what kind of mentality, what kind of peace, what kind of peaceful solution would this be? This is what we see in the world today. We see violence. We see irritation. We see the people uh, that act like they can't control their, their behavior. And the only thing they can think of is to lash out to, uh, in, in violence or hatred and to hurt one another and to kill one another. This is what we see going on with the governments of the world, the kingdom. The kingdom against kingdom, kingdom against kingdom, nation against nation. And there will be disease epidemics and famines. Famine. Famine 
famines and disease epidemics. That is the lack of food. Now, Revelation shows this and shows it will come under the auspices of the quartet. The quartet, four, the four living, as it's called in Revelation, in the original. The quartet wasn't invented until 2002, so it had to come after that. The first thing you see here is, of course, the, the system, this, this false religious system that teaches you to worship Lord and the Queen of Heaven and to worship gods who deceives the world into worshiping gods and lords and the Queen of Heaven instead of Yahweh, the Creator, who created the heaven and the earth. In fact, in Revelations it says, Worship Yahweh, the creator of heaven and earth. Here we see that this system is bringing forth a religion. A religion. It is so strange here, but one of the, one of the articles that we have available today, uh, it, it, I know that this is hard to believe for parents, but the United Nations threat. No more parental rights. No more parental rights. No more spanking. No more homeschooling. Which means religion. Let me read you this. A United Nations human rights. They call it human rights. It's taking away human rights. It's what it's doing. Par parental rights. But they call it human rights treaty. That could prohibit children from being spanked for disobedience or for deliberately doing things, being spanked, or homeschooled. Ban youngsters from facing death penalty and forbid parents from deciding their family religion. They want uh, to establish a one world religion. Now who do you think that's going to come from? A one-world religion and a one-world government. Of course, they won't be able to, you know, but in trying, they're going to bring all kinds of trouble for themselves. But they would not want the family to have anything to say about their children, what religion their children might belong to. Family religion is on America's doorstep. That is, deciding their family's religion is on the doorstep, a legal expert warns. Every decision a parent makes can be reviewed by the government to determine whether it is in the child's best interest. If they can put all their left-wing socialist politics into treaty, into this treaty form, we're stuck with it even if they lose the next election. Countries that ratify the treaty are bound to it by international law. Now this is what they're trying to get through. It's got America uh, up in arms. Here's another article on it. Pope Benedict, Pope Benedict the 16th says kids are not parents property. Now I guess they belong to the Catholic Church. They belong to everything except the parents who are supposed to own and teach them. The, parent, the Bible says they belong to the parent until they're given to Yahweh himself. That's what the scriptures show. But you're not allowed, you won't be allowed, and they're trying to block anyone who brings forth righteousness right now. Any form of holiness that comes forth from the holy scriptures, they're trying to stop. Of course, this has been going on for thousands of years. In fact, our forefathers in America, fled Europe because of the religious persecution that was taking place there. Well, it's still taking place, and it's starting here in America. And they're taking children away from parents here because of their religion. Yes, it's a religious persecution that the prophecy said would attack all forms of holiness of the people. Pope Benedict the Sixteenth says, Kids, not parents, property. They're not the parent's property. And so you have no right to teach them your religion. This is what this treaty is all about. Is parental authority, here's another one on it. Is parental authority on the UN chopping block? Yes, they show here that it is. The Savior saw this in prophecy 
And you know what he said? Matitia, the same chapter showing the end time now, the end time that we're in right now, we're in this time period right now, in chapter 24, he shows his disciples the end and said, this message of the kingdom is going to be preached, and it is being preached around the world at this time, and the end is not far off, my friend. Matitia, the same chapter, verse 12 says, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many, that is uh, the, the iniquity, that is the breaking of the laws of Yahweh, will abound, and the love of many will grow cold, but he who endures until the end, the same will be saved. And verse 19 says, Woe to those who are with child in those days or who have nursing babies in those days. Why would this woe be told to us? Well, we can get a glimpse of it right here because they're wanting to take your children. They're wanting your children to be trained under a one world religion. And guess what that religion might be? Well, of course, it's the one that has the world deceived right now. The same religion that has the world deceived. You know, in Deuteronomy, we're told, we're told to, to teach our children these things. This is the inspired words of Yahweh, though, that they want to do away with. In, in Deuteronomy, this is the command to, of Yahweh to you. He says, now these are the laws, the statutes, and the judgment which Yahweh your father has commanded you to teach to your children so that you may observe them. And he says in verse 7, he says, and you must teach them diligently unto your children and talk about them, teach them to your children. Well, they're saying you don't have that right to teach to your children these laws anymore. Yahweh says in verse 25, and it will be our righteousness. Yes, this is the definition of righteousness. These holy, righteous laws of Yahweh. This says don't kill, don't murder, don't bear false witness, which is what we see the religions doing when they do away with the laws of Yahweh. They are bearing false witness. They're bearing false witness. Well, in Revelation 6, we see that this is brought about in the days of the quartet, which started in 2002. My time is up. Till the next broadcast, may Yahweh bless your understanding.